Welcome back, my name is Teresa, and I'm very much I have an awful garbage filthy mouth for sometimes, just sometimes, I tend to use the word fuck as a comma. If you're not into that or weird stuff in general, this is definitely not the place for you. Feel free to exit out the video here. No harm, no foul. But I'll remember our Tom fondly. We have a decluttering. I know it's been a little bit since we've done one. First and foremost, I just want to set the rules here, okay? Everything that I'm going to show you today either is going to be donated to a shelter, friend, family member, or if it's incredibly too old, it's going to go straight into the garbage. Please, for the love of everything, do not beg me in the comments for any of these garbage finds. Don't do it. Don't be that person. Stop being you for the remainder of this video. Then you can go ahead and be garbage. I don't care. But seriously, do not beg. It's gross. Don't be that person. If you have never seen any of my decluttering videos in the past, I'm not gonna spend three years and a day talking about each item because to me, that's kind of boring. I'm just gonna give you quick thoughts on each one of these products. If you like some of these products, do not take it as a slight against you. Everybody can have their own opinion on it. If it worked for you, that's great. Some of these things did not work for me. We can still be friends. Makeup is subjective. Please remember that. Do not get all upset and weird about it. These companies don't give a fuck about you, okay? So if you're trying to white knight for them, don't. 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 They could literally care less about you. They got your money, okay? Like that's really all it is. That said, please make sure to thumbs down this video on the way out and without further ado, in no particular order, let's get to some motherfucking decluttering. And the first one is from Black Moon Cosmetics and this is the Urban Myth Palette. This came out last year. I wanted to like this so much more. I mean, aesthetically, this is fucking me. It matches the goddamn fucking tablecloth, okay? I am so sad that <laughs> I'm decluttering this from my life, but I found that these eyeshadows weren't amazing. If anything, they were kind of patchy, didn't really blend that well. The longevity was dog shit on them. And it's just uh, disappointing because the outside packaging is motherfucking stunning, but the inside was such a letdown. The next palette is from Clarity Cosmetics and this is the Blue Royal palette. This is another palette I really wanted to like, but it wasn't my favorite. I think the most disappointing about this palette was this shade. I wanted it to be so much more, but it was just the overspray on top of it and the glitter bukkake I got from this shade. Holy fucking shit. I tried this so many different ways and it just was mediocre at best. The next one is from Wet n Wild and this is from the Pac-Man collection. You know, this one, okay, uh, okay. <laughs> but fuck it, fine. This one was fine. I actually enjoyed this palette a lot, but um, this just doesn't want to open anymore. So I'm taking it as a sign that it just doesn't want to be used. Instead of collecting dust in my collection, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to give this cursed object to somebody else. And hopefully when they finally figured out how to open it, the demon will eat their soul. Oh hell, Colourpop. This is the Disney designer collection and probably one of the more basic bullshit palettes uh, from Colourpop. This was fine for what it was, but something that I don't really reach for. Shades that I have in my collection times 73 and the quality was okay. I think probably the best thing about this palette was the silver right here. Other than that, everything was, you know, it was fine. I think the older I get, the more I'm like, I am not okay with just fine things. Like I want things that I actually enjoy. And this is one of them that is like, eh, I didn't really fucking need it. The next thing is from BH Cosmetics and this is the Drop Dead Little Bit Psycho palette. I don't know why I got this. <laughs> I think I was just like, oh my God, Halloween. And then I was like, oh, okay. There was another palette that came out in this collection and that one was trash. This one was slightly better, but again, I don't really reach for it. BH has amazing quality. This was, ugh. I have better BH palettes. So I'm kind of, kind of annoyed that their consistency can be a little wonky at times. And this is just one of those palettes that obviously was a motherfucking cash grab. And I was too stupid to fucking realize that. The next one's for Makeup Revolution. And this is the Avocado palette. This was a fine palette. It. This was good, but you know, it's something that I don't really reach for as of late. I remember enjoying it. One of my favorite Makeup Revolution palettes, um, but it's just something I don't really reach for. So I'm gonna clean this up and give this to my friend who has been eyeing it for quite some time. So the next two palettes are from Profusion. And you know, I really, really enjoy Profusion. And I think their $5 palettes is where it's at. These I believe are $10 and they're okay. Like I feel like some shades are better than others. And I got these two Morphe size fucking palettes. So the first one is the Festival palette. It's okay. It's eh, like, 
eh, it's all right. Like I said, I prefer the $5 formula over this one. And then the other one is the, the Gold Rush palette. I wanted to like this one more, but there is a yellow palette from Profusion that's far better and half the price. So I recommend picking that one up. This one you could kind of like, eh, you don't really need it. So in any case, these are being passed on. It's not like I just said pissed on, passed on, but pissed on passed passed on okay next this one okay so i technically didn't i think i swatched it to be honest with you i swatched it and it's just something that i fucking forget about every time i got it in a glossy box this palette and i remember being like "Ooh, i've always wanted to try it and then i had it in my collection i swatched it for the video and then forgot about it so i know me i'm probably never going to look at this palette again so this is going to go to a new home i feel like my mom would totally fuck up these shades anyway because she is a basic ass bitch and i mean that with love this is a stupid fucking palette i hate this shit god this is probably one of the worst fucking buys <laughs> And I don't even know why I fucking bought it. I don't even know why I fucking didn't return it. I was so, I was really trying to love this thing, but it was just fucking, it was garbage. Some of the mats were okay. The other half of the mats were fucking terrible. They weren't pigmented. I don't even understand why the fuck they were in this palette. And the actual gemstone shades, I'm sorry, but I'm not putting my fucking sausage finger near my goddamn eye if I want to have any payoff. I tried this so many times with brushes, different types of brushes, natural hair, synthetic, shit, hair from my asshole never really fucking worked. So then I had to dig my little sausage finger here to get any sort of payoff. And when I did that, there'd be glitter bukkake everywhere. It was a vicious fucking cycle that I'm just not here for. So I need to pass on this cursed object to somebody else and maybe they'll make it work. But for me, I just fucking, uh, it's so disappointing because the outside packaging is everything, fucking everything. But the inside is just so shitty, so fucking shitty. Fuck you. That was aggressive, I know, but spending $50 on that bullshit really makes me feel some type of way. These little elf palettes that came out for the Mint to Be collection, these are trash. This one is by far one of the worst palettes I've ever tried. This is Mint to Be garbage. This one was slightly better, but not by much. These are a dollar more than their bite-sized palettes, which doesn't make any sense unless you're paying for the fucking mint green packaging. These are terrible. I do not recommend checking this out. If you wanted to try any sort of e.l.f. eyeshadow palette, look at the bite-sized one, but the original ones that are three bucks, not these four dollar fucking monsters. Fuck these palettes. I'm also going to be getting rid of this Natasha Denona Chromium Liquid Eyeshadow, and the only reason for that is, is that it dried out. That is probably my biggest complaint about these is that they are small, they're expensive, and they kind of dry pretty quickly. That said though, I love the fucking formula. I think the formula is probably one of the best liquid multi-chromes I've ever tried. I don't get irritated or anything like that. It's just a goddamn shame that it's so fucking tiny and it dries out really fucking fast. So if you are ever interested in picking one of these guys up, make sure it's on sale. Do not pay full price for this. But in any case, this makes me sad because I love him. The next thing is actually a brow product and this is from Laura Mercier. So this was kind of interesting. I really enjoyed this product initially, but then I don't know why, but the tip and the bottom half of the brush gets really fucking hard and very, I don't know, looks like dried semen. I don't want to fuck with it. And I don't like the fact that the last few times I have used this product, it makes my eyebrow hair look like I have fucking jet gel in it and it looks white. It just aggravates the shit out of me. It's a shame because I really liked it in initially, but I feel like it has a very short shelf life. This thing is from By Terry, and I don't even think they fucking sell this anymore. This is the Brightening CC Blush. I have mixed feelings on it. Some days I really enjoyed it, and I found that it looked really, really beautiful. And then there'd be some days where it would be impossible to fucking blend. It was one of those blushes that I needed to have the right combination for it to work, and I never quite figured out what the right combination was. The fact that it was very finicky makes me not want to hold on to this product anymore. So with that said, I'm packing its bags and it's moving the fuck out. This was fucking upsetting. This is from Ciate in London and this is the Miss Piggy collection. They did Miss Piggy dirty. They really did. Probably some of the shittiest cream blushes I've ever used. The only good thing about this whole thing is the fucking outside packaging. Like this is adorable, but the actual product inside is trash. The formula was not great. It was very difficult to use. It didn't have a good longevity and it was kind of a... Uh, how do I put this? Garbage. <laughs> And not the fun kind like me. This was straight up fucking garbage and a huge cash grab. But I mean, listen, if you're going to do Miss Piggy, do Miss Piggy right. You know what I mean? Like don't half-ass it. This was just really 
fucking disappointing. So the next thing is from Wet n Wild and this is the Pac-Man blush quad. Okay, okay, oof, all right. I don't know why, but it just gets harder and harder to open this Wet n Wild packaging. I don't know if, if it's trying to tell me something, I don't know, but in any case, I really did enjoy this when I got it. I thought it was really beautiful. Unfortunately, I feel like since I've had it for quite some time now, the pigmentation is not as strong as it used to be. So kind of based on that, it's like, eh, it's kind of weak and it fades pretty quickly. And I'm actually kind of curious at why Wet n Wild doesn't release more things like this. I haven't seen any other collection that has had a blush quality like this. Wet n Wild, can you please do that again? Because that was, that was pretty fucking cool. In any case, I had my time and now we have to bid her farewell. Okay, these fucking things. Honestly, <laughs> I think I am going to put a pause on stuff from Rare Beauty because I feel like the only things I really truly do like is like their lip products and their concealer. Like everything else has been like not great. Oh, no, I take that back. Their liquid blush was fabulous. This I wanted to like so much more and it's a little, their little cream blushes. I love the fucking packaging. Their packaging is giving me Polly Pocket vibes extraordinaire and I'm fucking here for it. The problem with these is that on my skin tone, Type. They did not have a good longevity and these were impossible to use to not create holes in my face. I would always disturb the products underneath and I wouldn't even fuck with these on top of powder. That was somehow worse, but under powder, just on top of cream products, these would always just lift my foundation and my you know, cream bronzer, cream contour every fucking time. The holes were really impossible to fucking fix. I had to like legitimately take off my makeup and then try to gingerly use these products by tapping it on with a finger. I can't fucking do the hand holding with this. So with that said, these need to be shot off into space and die. Let's move on to some fucking highlighters. So the first one's from Maybelline and this is a Master Holographic. This is a Prismatic Highlighter 050. The shift on this is incredibly weak. I really tried my best to build it up and when I did build it up, it just never sat nicely on my face and there was a little bit too much glitter bukkake for my liking. I really tried to make this an Alien Slut highlighter and it just did not work for me. Next two I have are from Give Me Glow and I absolutely fucking adore Give Me Glow. I think they have really fantastic highlighter formula. These were just complete misses on me. This is Late Night Coastin and this one is the Snowflake. So Snowflake, listen, I'm always looking for that perfect white highlighter. And for me, I think the perfect white highlighter is from Burberry. You cannot beat that highlighter. Like that is the fucking king of all white highlighters. That being said, I was really hopeful that, you know, I'm gonna dethrone Burberry and we're gonna go in with the indie brand. This one is just fucking Chunky City. Chunky, flaky, and when you start to blend it out, it kind of blends into nothing. So I was not a fan of this one. The formula didn't feel as good as the other ones that I have. And then when I got this one, I was super excited because I was like, oh my God, this color is gonna look fucking fabulous. But this is a little deceiving. This one kind of pulls a little bit darker. So I think this is probably perfect for someone that has like maybe light to medium skin tone. If you are on cooked chicken like myself, so it looks like somebody hits you with a sack of sparkles. It's just really weird. Like you left a bruise and glitter bukkake and it's just, it's not cute. If you are fair like me, I don't recommend this, but if you are light medium, I think it could work. The next one is from Melt and this is the Illumination highlight. Illumination. I'm trying y'all, okay? <laughs> This is their digital dust highlighters and this came out, I want to say, I think this was like their holiday two years ago when it had like the Muerte palettes. The pan embossing is completely done. This was disappointing. I wanted so much more from this highlighter and I just didn't get it. It's very glittery, very sparkly, very glitter bukkake. The shift is, while very pretty, it's incredibly light. I feel like I have things in my collection that have a much more stronger pink shift that look flattering on me. This kind of, I don't know, it didn't really do anything. So for the price that I fucking paid for, it's like this shit better be uh, fucking me and cooking me breakfast. And it does neither. Uh, I was rooting for you, bitch. I was fucking rooting for you. This is bad, dude. This is fucking bad. So this one is the Iced Out Highlighter. I love that Amrezy highlighter. This one, I was like, oh my God, fuck yes, this is for me. This 
has such a weird like piss yellow color to it. It looks like just someone threw piss on your face. Probably the best way that I could describe it. It has such a fucking sickening twinge. Don't know who this is for. I expected it to have like alien slut properties and I mean I guess alien slut, I mean it does have golden shower feel to it. But it's not the alien slut that I want. Nothing wrong with that. Listen, I'm not kink shaming here. If you want to do that, that's totally fine. But I expected more from you. It's not as blinding as advertised. I don't like looking like I have jaundice. <laughs> so, and that's what this feels like to me. This was just really fucking disappointing. This one breaks my heart. This brand doesn't even fucking exist anymore. This is from Glossier Play. This was probably one of my favorite liquid highlighters. This is in the shade Pale Pearl. This one, you know, I'm kind of getting rid of because it doesn't perform as well. And it's kind of a little bit dried out and I don't have that much product left in here. So I figured this is probably the best time to just get rid of it. So, so a moment of silence, please. Thank you. The next thing is from Beauty Bakery. And you know, I feel like this has passed at least three different rounds of declutters. And this is just a highlighter palette while very pretty, just something I don't really reach for. The quality is okay. I don't want any of this shit, okay? <sighs> I had really high expectations because I absolutely adore the Jaclyn Cosmetics palette that came out holiday 2019. I fucking adored it. I was really hoping that it was going to be the same quality. And to be honest, I didn't think it was. If you wanna see the video that I did using these products, I'll link it up in the corner. These I felt like were not the same as the highlighters that were in the larger palette. These little glimmering powders, the highlighters looked a little bit better once you combine the products, but it's just like, listen, I'm tired, okay? I don't wanna to have to do all these extra fucking steps to make something work for me. It either works or it doesn't work. And for me, these just didn't work. So in any case, these got to go. I was trying to think of something funny to say. I think I'm just more annoyed at myself for falling for this fucking hype. Yep. The next one is from Milani, and this is the Prep, Set, and Glow Illuminating Transparent Powder. You know, this was okay. It wasn't the best thing in the world, but it wasn't uh, the worst thing either. I felt like it did do a nice job of illuminating my face. However, it kind of made it a little bit more drier than I liked it to be, especially around my nose. It definitely sat weird on my nose and created a lot of dry texture. I really enjoyed it on my cheeks and my forehead, but on my nose, it just just looked like fucking trash. In any case, I'm gonna pass this on to my mom because I feel like she might enjoy this one. The last powder we have is from Bessemer and this is the Pearl Shimmer Shell Compact. This one was fine. I don't know, like I don't really reach for it as much as I did in the past. I think it's okay. Not the best thing I've ever tried. Something that I kind of forget about, honestly. So this is another thing I'm gonna pass on to my mom and uh, see if she likes it. But um, it was fine. I don't know, it's just not really super fucking memorable. I think the packaging is what really sells me on it. Everything else I'm like, eh, eh. So now I'm gonna move on to primers. The first one is from Milani. This is a Prime Light. This is a really good primer. I'm getting rid of it because I don't have a lot of product left, but I would happily repurchase this one. I have two products from e.l.f. Let me start with this one. This is the e.l.f. Retro Paradise Glow Oil. I have to get rid of it because it broke me out horribly. And I'm starting to think a lot of e.l.f. complexion products just are breaking me the fuck out. So I need to take a pause with e.l.f. for a little bit. But this one hardly broke out, which is super sad because I really did like how it looked on my skin. But you know, I just don't like fucking breaking out. So I need to get rid of that one. This thing, oh my God, I fucking hate this thing. I hate this thing. What did I say in my review? That this reminds me of a horror movie every time I put it on my skin. It would somehow dry yet be wet at the same time and it kind of felt like my skin was falling off. I don't know. I was not a fucking fan of it. This was probably one of the worst things that I've tried from e.l.f. I know there are a lot of people that really enjoy it so definitely take what I'm saying with a grain of salt because yay you might really fucking like it. But for me this made the CC cream just look like straight up motherfucking cement on my face. Oh God, now this was terrible. The next thing is from Farsali and this is the Liquid Powder Oil Balancing Serum Primer. This was great. I really enjoyed it. And the only reason why I'm getting rid of it is because at the bottom and impossible to fucking come out. I really enjoyed this product. Now, I don't know if Farsali is going out of business or do they stop selling in Sephora? Anyway, if someone knows more information about it, let me know down below. But this one wasn't a bad product and definitely way better than that fucking unicorn jizz primer. The last primer I have is from Gucci and this is the Silk Priming Serum. I'm so mad about this primer. <laughs> 
This was so fucking, it just, I hated it. I hate it. I'm just gonna link up my video in the corner. I just, oh, I, uh, my heart is racing holding this product. I fucking hate it. It dried my skin out so damn badly. I thought I was dying. <laughs> I was like, what is happening to me? This was garbage. Ugh, fucking not worth the money or the headache at all. And yeah, it has that fucking old lady vagina smell. I fucking, I can't with Gucci products. No, 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 no. So let's move on to some concealers. The first one is from Marc Jacobs and this is the Accomplice Concealer. And the reason that I'm getting rid of it, as you can see, like I used the shit out of it. This was fine. I did enjoy this one a lot. It can be though a little too drying at times. So you definitely have to hydrate your under eye area. But when I did hydrate that area, it always sounds perfectly and it would never move. That's what I really enjoyed about this particular concealer. The next one is from Hourglass. You know, I really tried with this one. This is the Vanish Hourglass concealer. This concealer sat in my creases so much so that I feel like I could like pick the product out of it. Like, ugh, it, it was just gross. And I didn't like how this sat on my skin. I think it was very pretty as like a brightening concealer, but I just don't like how it immediately settles to the bottom. And I have a lot of craters and weird shit on my face and it just always looked like it just stood out. So yeah, I don't fucking recommend this one. This one was terrible. Terrible. So I'm gonna move on to foundation before I show you some empty products. First one is, <laughs> I fucking hate this foundation. Much like the primer, whatever, you can just watch the fucking video. This, ugh. This just dried my skin out and I broke out from both of these products. So it's just like, I can't, I can't fuck with it. If you want a luxury foundation, do not buy Gucci. Like, it's not worth it. Definitely spend the money and get La Mer, get Sicily. If you want that fucking experience, get that. This is just hot water trash. You're only paying for the name. Fuck this product. This needs to get shot off into space and burn up in the atmosphere. Like this is fucking garbage. The next product is from Milani and this is the cream to powder foundation. So I feel like a lot of people as of late have been comparing this foundation to the KVD Vegan Beauty Foundation. You know, this one, eh, the reason why it's not my favorite is that this dries down horribly on my skin. So I kind of feel like it emphasizes a lot of dry texture. Even though I have prepped the shit out of my skin to make sure it's super hydrated, this somehow sucks the moisture out. Like I just don't like my skin looking flat and I feel like this one does a really good job of doing that. I don't recommend this product. And you know what, this one too, like this is actually a two for one. This is the Extra Shot Marc Jacobs Foundation and Concealer. I had a lot of high hopes for this product considering I have been really loving a lot of things from Marc Jacobs lately. This is another product that was kind of finicky and something that I just, I don't, I don't find myself reaching for because it's kind of a pain in the ass. If you want to see a review on this, I'll link it up in the corner, but I just don't think this was worth the money. And also this product recently came out and it was already on sale. So if that doesn't say something, I don't know what does. Does. This thing. This thing is probably the worst fucking complexion product I have ever tried. I don't know why everybody sucks this thing's dick, but everybody does. I found this product to be completely drying, not comfortable. This product felt like cement on my skin. And this was probably one of the worst complexion products I have tried this year. Again, I had high hopes because everybody was talking about it, but it was just one of those products that was just so fucking disappointing. It's like, don't meet your heroes, kids. They're gonna disappoint you. And this is what this was. It was just so fucking bad. Anyway. Don't recommend that one. And last but not least, I have some empties for y'all. I know. I do have a lot of makeup, but I also go through a lot of makeup. So I'm trying to make it a point now just to collect some of my empties, but I don't do it all the time. I kind of just throw shit in the trash and just forget about it. But I made it a point to save some stuff for this particular declutter. And the first one is from Beauty Bakery, and this is the Insta Bake Foundation. I enjoyed this foundation, but it has a shelf life on it. So I feel like for the first like six hours, it looks fabulous and then by like hour seven to eight it starts to break away around my chin in any case this is really beautiful it's just not long wearing i would pick this up again but i would totally get this on sale i don't recommend the concealer the concealer is kind of trash but the foundation good. The next thing is from Charlotte Tilbury and this is the Airbrush Flawless Foundation. You know, I liked it, but it was definitely too yellow. And I feel like with all the shades in this particular line, even though some are neutral, because this one is 3N, it still pulled very warm. I am not a warm boy. I'm a cool tone boy. So this is just something I probably would never ever repurchase again. Unless I suddenly change my mind and decide to be a warm boy, I wouldn't pick this up. But other than that, the formula was fine. I enjoyed it. Was it the best thing I ever tried? No, it definitely wasn't the worst. 
it was very middle of the road. Definitely a little bit too expensive for what it was. So if you are interested, get it on sale. The next thing is from Fenty and this is the Hydrating Foundation in the shade 160. I really enjoyed this foundation a lot. I really love this for the summertime. I found like this was really good, especially for the days that were very hot and humid. I felt like my skin held up pretty well. In any case, I would happily repurchase this one again. The other one I have is from Tarte and this is the Marcuja, right? I think that's how you pronounce it. The Marcuja Tinted Hydrator. And this one was fine too. Like it wasn't my favorite tinted moisturizer. I definitely think I like the Chantecaille, the Laura Mercier, and the Aborian one a little bit better, but this wasn't bad for what it was. That being said, I don't think I would ever really pick this one up again because it wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't life-changing. It was okay, but I think there are things that are better on the market. And the last product is from ColourPop, and this is the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer. I really enjoyed this product. I thought it was really good. I don't think I had any true issues with it, and I mentioned that because in my last video, I was talking about how Too Faced has coconut oil in their products, and I was reading the ingredients on the Pretty Fresh line, and there is, I think, coconut water. And now I'm trying to remember if I did have any sort of breakouts and I'm not thinking about it. In any case, I want to get an allergy test first before I pick up any more products that have coconut in it, just to make sure that I'm not allergic to it. But I don't think I had any reaction to this, but I can't remember because it's been a while since I used it. And I've been kind of holding onto the fucking empty for a little bit. So I don't remember. But in any case, I want to take the allergy test first before I pick up anything more from the Pretty Fresh line. Also still have a foundation. I have like this much left in it. Again, kind of hesitant to use it only because I want to make sure that if I am allergic to start getting rid of all the products that have coconut in it so I don't have to experience any bullshit. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so with that said, that is my declutter. Let me know down below if you have any of these products, if you love them, if you hate them, if you really don't give a fuck about it, whatever. I don't care. Tell me how your day is. What's going on with you? How are you doing? I feel like nobody asked you that, right? How are you doing? Let me know down below because I love hearing from you. And with that said, I want to say thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it as always. Feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe button. It's free and hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon to all my beautiful, wonderful patron bubbies. Thank you so much for keeping this delicious, disgusting garbage boat afloat. I couldn't do without you. And I love your adorable little delicious faces. I just want to gobble them all really I do. I just want to eat you all up and be one and it's going to be great. If you want to know what is currently on my nails, which is a shitload of hollow taco, everything will be listed in the description box below along with where to find my merch and my podcast and my bloopity blop blop. And with that said, I'll see you little pumpkins later. I'm sorry. I don't mean to grab, but I cannot help it. Bye.